can be able to to get it now Newton's laws is just an easy basic topic but now it has law one which we call Newton first law and it has now law two which we call Newton second law and then it has law three which we call Newton third law and then it has now law four which we call Newton's law of universal gravitation remember you can have your notes with you but i will still send you the pdf file immediately after this session now obviously we are going to start with each and every law here we are going to start with one two and three and also eventually get to four but i must emphasize that newton first law is focusing on stationary or objects at rest or uniform motion we must just now understand that second law it is now focusing on objects that are accelerating or now these are moving we will expand further as to how we go about this but i must also emphasize that now newton second law ladies and gentlemen it is one of the most important laws that one can think of newton third law focusing on what we call action reaction pair so all this will be explained as we move into into the topic itself so we are going to start with newton first law now newton first law what does it say that is now also very very important for two marks in an exam you will be asked to state newton first law and this is what we need to say an object will stay at rest or continue to move at a constant velocity constant velocity unless acted upon by an external net net force now let's unpack this definition unpacking this definition it says if i have an object that is at rest it will stay at rest now let's consider this block let's consider this block sitting on a horizontal plane so this is a block sitting on a horizontal plane and i must emphasize now that this block is 
at rest or it is now stationary. So this object will remain there, will remain stationary unless if we introduce an external net force. <clears throat> Sorry. So as long as there is no external net force, it means that object will remain at rest. However, if this object is moving, let me duplicate it. However, if this object now is moving, moving, let's say, into this direction. It means if all the forces acting on it, if I have this force and I have that force and I have this force and I have this force here, what does this it say? It says now all forces acting on all forces acting on an object are in equilibrium. So it is moving, yes, but because it is not accelerating, it is not uh, moving at an unusual pace, we say all the forces that are there, F1, F2, F3, F4, they are actually equal to each other. And we say now those forces are in equilibrium. Hence here they say, or continue to move at constant velocity. So when it is moving, but it is not accelerating, it is moving at a constant velocity. We say now it is moving at a constant velocity because now why? Because of all the forces acting on it are at equilibrium. Let's consider a car. A car is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour. And when it is traveling at that, we say we put what we call a cruise control. So you lock the speed at 120 or the velocity at 120, then it continues to move. There's a force that is making it to move, force of the engine. There's a frictional force now acting between now what? Between the tires of the car and the tar road. But now the car is still moving. So we're saying it is in continuing in its motion or it is continuing to move but at a constant velocity. So what does constant velocity mean? Very, very, very important. Constant velocity means that acceleration is equal to zero meters per second. Lehagwe Please note this. This is what the examiners are using in the exam to actually frustrate, frustrate us. Why? Because when we do exam type of problems, they will be using words such as constant velocity. It is at rest. It is dropped. All those things are the science principles that each and every one of us must be able to understand. So what does this mean? It means unless acted upon by external net force. So if I can apply another different force, this object will start to move faster. Let's go back to our example of the car. It is at 120. I have locked 
the speed at 120 cruise control. But now I want to overtake. What must I do? Release the cruise control and then apply the accelerator. What am I doing? I am pushing now that the accelerator is no longer zero. So once the acceleration is not zero, it means that object, it is now in Newton's second law. Why? Newton's second law, it says object must be accelerating. But Newton's first law says it is either stationary or moving at a constant velocity. So if the velocity is the same throughout, constant velocity, then that is Newton's first law. But once we see that now we are applying the acceleration to this particular object and it starts to accelerate with an acceleration that is now greater than zero, what does that mean? It means now we are on Newton's second law. Questions, please, or inputs, Lehakwe, so far, if there's anything. So far, I'm fine. I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lehakwe. Then we can move to the application of first law. The application of first law. Uh, something that also relates with first law is what we call number two number two is what we call inertia very 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 important now the question is what is this inertia Inertia is the resistance, the resistance of an object to change in its state of motion or rest full stop now let's understand what inertia is <coughs> excuse me inertia is the resistance of the body or the resistance of an object to change in its state of motion or rest. Let's go back to that car of ours. You are in a car, it's traveling at 120 kilometers per hour. Now, the driver sees a cow that is crossing the road. What do they do? They immediately apply the brakes. What will happen to your body, uh, Lehakwe? The driver is seeing now a cow that is crossing the road. So to avoid uh, bumping into the car or having an accident with the car, what happens then? It means you must apply the brakes. What happens to the passengers inside the car? <clears throat> they like basically like try to stop themselves from like I don't know like moving like going to they go they, they move towards the same direction of the of the car because once they hit the, the driver hits now the brakes you move forward and go back to the original position. So that 
part of you moving back and uh, moving forward and coming back is what we call the initia. So the initia in simple terms is the resistance of an object to change in its state of motion or in its position of rest. So you are at rest, you are actually moving with the speed of the car because you are in the car. Once there is a change now in terms of the force applied of the bricks, what happens? You move forward and you go back. So your body is resisting that change of you going forward. So that we call it inertia. But the factors also affecting inertia. Factors affecting initia. The very first one is mass. The larger the mass of an object, the larger the mass of an object, the more difficult the more difficult it is to move it from from rest. Let's highlight what is important here. The larger the mass, the more difficult it is to move it from rest. <laughs> So when you have a very large object and you are trying to push this object <clears throat> and it's not moving, it's because of the large mass it has. So it will not change that position. Why? Because it is more difficult to change its position of rest. So it will not have the sufficient, it will have sufficient inertia for it not to change. Furthermore, we say fine. Then one can easily say it is just as difficult as to stop a heavy moving object. So we can say it is just as difficult as to stop the heavy moving object. <coughs> if you are into movies, you'll realize some movies, especially the ones with trucks and cars, your Fast and the Furious and all this kind of movies. Once the truck fails in terms of the brakes, that truck is not stopping. It will continue to move until it hits a mountain. It is only because of the larger the mass, the more difficult it is to move the object or to change its position. So once the brakes fail in terms of that track, it will continue moving forward until until. Hence we say, no wonder large tracks causes such much damage when the brakes fail. Very, very, very. Uh, important. Now, <coughs> this inertia and Newton first law. Newton first law can be asked in a form of a definition. State Newton first law. Also explaining what it means with Newton first law. When we say constant velocity is equals to zero, 
we can basically also maybe add let's add here also to say f net is also equals to zero newton this i will explain when we work with newton but second law but let's already add it there such that we enhance the the concept <coughs> so now this is initial very very important the definition can also be asked and also the factor that is affecting initial in most instances it's just mass it's actually just just mass but you need now to understand how mass actually influences initia thereof. So the larger the mass, the more initia the object will have. Very, very, very uh, important. Any questions relating to initia? Are you following? Is the concept now becoming easy and clearer? everything is looking good and clear right now thank you very much uh, <laughs> now let's check in the case of applying Newton first law When we want to apply Newton's first law in our daily lives, we need also to consider the impact in terms of Newton, in terms of the safety belts thereof. Let's jot it down and say at number three, we have now a safety safety belt so this safety belt why is it there maybe i should ask that question why do we have a safety belt to basically keep people safe like to stop people from like getting into like accidents or like get injured during an accident so the <coughs> safety belt can basically cause the force of inertia very true why because if we do not have a safety belt that motion of the inertia going forward is the one that will throw me outside the windscreen it is the one that is going to expose me now to the dashboard so safety belt they assist in terms of reducing the impact let's say reduces impact by increasing contact time between the passenger and the dash board and then what does that mean if uh, it increases the contact time it means now the net force the net force is reduced or decreased decreased and the passenger will be less injured that is what it does so it basically increases the contact time increases the contact time why because you are going to move forward 
it actually tries to pull you back. So the time you take for you to hit the dashboard or the steering wheel is now increased. And if the contact time is increased, the net force is reduced or decreased. That means the force that you are going to hit the, <coughs> the dashboard, the force that you are going to use to hit the steering wheel, it is now reduced, it is less. And if it is less, it means now the passenger will be less injured. That is the reason why we need now, ladies and gentlemen, to have what? To have our seat belts fastened at all times. So this thing here of Newton <coughs> first law, it goes with inertia, it goes with safety belts, but it can also be applicable when we have now also airbags. Why? The airbag is going to smash into your face, pushing you back when it inflates. But after some time, it is going to deflate. That means loses that air inside. But what has it done? It actually uh, reduced impact by increasing the contact time. So the contact time between you and the dashboard as the passenger has increased. Why has it, it increased? Because the airbag now is between you and the dashboard. Then the net force is reduced. And if the net force is reduced, the impact that the passenger is going to go to the dashboard with has been decreased. Then it means now the force of impact becomes less and the passenger will be less injured. So now, the way I explain concepts is the way the examiners wants you to answer. You basically explained the same thing to say it is there to assist in terms of us not getting injured. True. But the bigger question in science is how does it do it? Yes, we know it is there because you can ask anyone what is the importance of safety, the importance of having a safety belt. They will say to reduce accidents or to reduce harm during accidents. Fine, it is true. But the question in science is how does it do so? So it reduces impact by increasing the contact time between the passenger and the dashboard. It must be end. The net force is reduced and the passenger will be less injured. So this will be something like two marks as an explanation. At times it is three marks if you are going to add other concepts as we move. But what is important is yes, it it, it assists us during the accidents. But the question is how? How does it do it? That is now the science part of, of it. So if we cannot be able to explain the science part of it, we will not get it right in the in the examination. Lehagwe, questions, suggestions, any inputs, please. Um, it's nice to learn something new. Like, this is, I didn't know, like, such a small thing could have, like, so much behind it. So, like, it's easy to understand as well, so far from what I know. Thank you very much, Lehagwe. Now, with this, it means we have covered Newton's first law. So Newton's first law in the exam, it does not have much marks. It's either you state and then you apply in terms of explaining the safety belts, the factors of initia and the initia itself. Maybe the other question will be, is it possible to explain what will happen 
when the road is wet in terms of Newton first law. Why do we have that issue that when the surface is wet, the car will continue moving forward? What could be the reason? How can we explain that in terms of Newton's first law? Maybe I should say the driver of the car is driving at a high speed on a smooth wet road. The car does not turn as expected when he goes around the sharp curve. Now the question should be maybe I can do this and quickly add it to this particular slide. Let's take it. Here it is. It says here, <clears throat> can you see it? Yeah. It says Michael Schumacher drives his car at high speed on a smooth road or smooth wet road. His car does not turn as expected when he tries to go around a sharp curve. Now, what will be the question to follow? The question to follow should be explain with reference to Newton's first law. Let's do that. Explain with Newton first law. Why the car does not react when the steering wheel is tent. Explain with Newton first law why the car does not react when the steering wheel is tent. When the steering wheel is tent. Can you think of something? Maybe let me give you something like a minute for you to actually just think of something and then we will discuss it now. Thank you very much, Lahakwe. Any input on how best can we explain this? <clears throat> um, I I don't know, but like, like I'm looking at now like the factors, and I see that like if the car the car is obviously like heavy, mm. so like the, 
with the cop being heavy on top of that, it will be like kind of hard to control like the whole car trying not to like um like getting to an accident or anything because it's an heavy it's a heavy object because. and it will be hard like to move it around with a slippery road. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Now that is linking it with inertia. Correct. But the question wants us to refer to Newton first law. That is the catch. You got it right, but if the question was explained with inertia, why a car does not react, then we will explain in terms of the mass of the object. However, the key thing here is the examiner is telling us to say we must explain in terms of first law. So, What does first law say? Let's go back to first law. It says an object will stay at rest or continue to move at constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force. So it will continue to move unless acted upon by a non-external force. Now, For the answer, we should be able to say, since the road is wet, the road is wet, do we agree there is no friction between the tires? and the road that is very very important that is the first thing why because we said f net is equals to zero so that object will continue to move why because we do not have any external force so because of we do not have the friction we can easily say fine then it means therefore there is no resultant force and acting on the car that can stop it moving forward which is true very very true very very true because of now the road is wet it will just keep on moving. Why? Because there is no frictional force. There isn't any external force that allows it now to come to rest. Then it means that the object continues to move unless acted upon by an external force. What is an external force? Tension, frictional force, applied force, all those are external forces. Why are they external forces? Because their contact forces form grade 8, grade 9, grade 10. So it is important also to understand what it means when we say the net external force is now <coughs> zero. Why? Because uh, le hague, the object continues to move. Happy. Okay, I understand. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much, Lehawe. Now let's move along. <clears throat> when we move along. 
comes now the issue of Newton second law. Newton second law states that Newton's second law states that when a net force net force is applied to an object the object will accelerate in the direction of the net force full stop acceleration is directly proportional directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object I can hear your heart saying am I expected to know this yes how could you expected to know this this is a very very important definition under Newton's laws <coughs> basically what it says is <coughs> sorry acceleration is directly proportional to F net and acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of an object so this is when we explain in terms of symbols this is now symbolic expression now we also need an equation f net is equals to ma this is what we call second law equation now Newton second law on its own it overlaps from grade 11 to grade 12 basically let me just say Newton's laws is one of the two peaks that overlaps from grade 11 to grade 12 whatever i am going to support you with in terms of newton's laws you can even take a question paper of 2023 20, november grade 12 and look at question 2 you will see it will be newton's laws 
but now we focus more on Newton's second law, like I said. Why? Because Newton's second law is the one that has now calculations. So this one, it is important because it has calculations. In grade 11, Newton's laws can be something around 30 to 40 marks, depending on what the examiners want to assess. <clears throat> now, the calculations obviously are informed by the equation that we are going to use. But we cannot just use this equation. We cannot. Why? We must understand what is the mass of the object. We must also understand what is acceleration. We must also understand what is meant by F net. Maybe Lehagwe, the question should be what do you understand by resultant force? Or what do you understand by the net force? Net force and resultant force are the same thing. But my question is, what do you understand by the weight? Net force. What do you understand by that? Um, net force. I I don't really know, but I can try. Um, net force is basically like I would say like all of the like I don't know how to explain it. But looking at like the like equation already, like F net, then I would basically assume that it's basically like the mass and acceleration together, but like multiplied. Okay, but like now... everything like that we are working with. Okay, but now let's say, ne, <clears throat> in simple terms, let's say we don't have the formula F net is equals to NA. I'm just saying to you, explain net force to me. We explain net force. Ne? Let's say basically net or resultant. Let's add it here as an explanation. <coughs> is the total sum the total sum of <coughs> each physical quantity keyword total sum so when I talk of the net, I mean the total of each physical quantity. Physical quantity, it can be mass, it can be force, it can be time, anything. But if I am going to add time one, time two, time three, time four, that is giving me the net. That means it is now the total. So what does this mean? It means I cannot use Newton's second law without calculating the net. So the net, which means I must get the total, the total sum of everything. If I cannot get the total of F1, F2, F3, then it means now I am not in a position of performing very well in this particular section. Why? Because F net, it needs me now to identify all forces that are working on the object. So one can add and say total sum basically means identify all forces acting on an object. Very, very, very important. 
very, very, very important. So I cannot use that if I do not have what? The sum of all the physical quantities. Let's go again. <clears throat> When a net force is applied, so when the total sum of forces is applied to an object, that object will accelerate. So what does it mean? It means it will move in what? In the direction of the net force. So if I find that the total sum here says negative or something like that, it will mean the object will also accelerate in that direction. If my force is moving to the left, then also the object will move to, to the left. Very, very important. But acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. So if net force is increasing, acceleration is also increasing. So let's write that in terms of the expressions of the formulas. Ah, sorry. And then I see this is F net and this is acceleration. The Hakwe directly proportional means they will increase with the same increment thereof. And the gradient here, gradient. will be equals to F net divided by A, which is just equals to the mass F net is equals to A. So I can actually use this for me to calculate the mass if I am given this type of a graph. Now, Questions, inputs, suggestions, please, on Newton's second law. Okay, it makes more sense now. Now I feel like we, I made a mistake. Okay, thank you very much. Now, critical weight, identify all forces. Very, very important. Identify all forces. Now, I am introducing a new concept. A new concept is draw a free body diagram. Draw a free body diagram. This is now very, very important. If you are unable to identify all the forces acting on an object, we will not be able to perform any calculation relating to Newton's second law. We are going to draw what we call a free body diagram. And a free body diagram is our way of identifying the forces acting on an object. Before we can use F net is equals to MA, we must first draw a free body diagram. Now hint, very, very important hint. Check, mark, allo, K, 
application. Example four marks relates to four vectors or four forces. So when you check the question paper and the examiner says draw a free body diagram and you check mark allocation is four marks it means you must identify four forces that is now a cheat sheet that i can give you if there are five it means you must draw five vectors if there's three it's only three if there's two it's only two forces very 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 important <clears throat> very 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 important why is that the case for every vector drawn there's a mark allocated so if we cannot draw a free body diagram or we are unable to identify the number of forces then it means we are going to be doomed in terms of applying Newton's second law. Four marks, four vectors. Now my question should be, do you know different types of forces or the names of forces that we have in physical sciences? Anyone that you know grade eight we said a force is a push or a pull can you give me maybe any other two examples of forces that you know any two um i think compression force is one of them compression force that is now in techno and technology grade eight Uh, torsion force H, I don't tension force all those different types of forces so I'm going to explain the ones that we're going to work with yeah? because those ones in grade 8 and 9 <clears throat> they were focusing on beams on stretching uh, what yes, objects uh, tier 4 shear force all those things so for grade 11 there are specific forces that we are going to be working with and that will be your homework for when we meet forces A, we are going to work with the normal force. B, <clears throat> we are going to work with tension force. Okay, let me just say tension. C, we are going to work with frictional force. D, we are going to work with gravitational force. Gravitational force. E, we are going to work with force applied. So your homework is very easy. Maybe I should add F that is now static frictional force. G kinetic frictional force.
So your homework is very easy. It's just to find definitions of each. Why definitions of each? Because if I don't know what a normal force is, I will not be able to identify it. So these are the forces that when I work with Newton's second law, I must be able to identify. If I can identify all these forces that are here, then I'm going to draw the correct free body diagram. And from the correct free body diagram, I will be able Lehagwe to do what? To use Newton's second law equation correctly or the right way. Why? Because I have identified all the forces that are acting on an object. Lehagwe inputs suggestions, please. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I learned a lot today. Okay, like, some things, like, since it's been a while since I've, like, did some work, like, it was nice to do some revision and just know certain things that I would, like, start in for grade 11. Thank you very much. <clears throat> because now this is day one, session number one. We don't want to push too hard because... We believe now it is uh, day one of school. So you also maybe have other things to do for you to actually settle well in grade 11. So I'm not going to push it until 8 o'clock. We will stop here. But please find the definitions of this. Once you have the definitions of all this, it will be easy for the second session now to overlap or to flow nice and easy. The reason why I'm stopping it here, <clears throat> it is because that I am thinking we're supposed to have a session tomorrow. But now tomorrow it is that announcement of the results of grade 12, 2023. And I have been invited there. So I will just check if I they finish early, then we can be able to continue. If not, I will squeeze now the sessions on Saturday and most probably Friday evening as well. But let's communicate tomorrow. I will send the message in the group if anything happens. Just inform your mom to say that now I have been invited there as uh, one of the people who will get accolades and everything like that. So I need now to also support my my immediate boss if it happens the sessions take longer then no problem we'll just use it now saturday morning nine o'clock and then 10 o'clock 11 o'clock we will be done and anyhow uh who is your teacher is it miss uh Rottenberg? no no we have a new teacher is it me me minar um, Minar. Meminar, okay. Yes, yes uh, Meminar has not started anything with you, so we are actually one step ahead. So you'll probably start with vectors, that topic that I said when they do Newton's laws with you, it will be revision. When I do uh, vectors with you, to you it will be revision. So it means you'll be hearing the same thing over and over again, and that enhances teaching. So the question will be, at, at the instance when she starts giving you homeworks, and I'm also giving you homeworks, it will look like it's a lot of work. But preferably start with those ones of school, finish them off. Mine will always be definitions, one question, not necessarily anything hectic like that. So, most learners will run away once they get the work of school and my work, but saying at school we are doing this and then that number is doing something else different, but only not realizing it's actually a way of you understanding the concepts better. 
you will see by the time you get to this topic you will be just flowing because of you will be knowing or you had that head start in terms of the topic itself Lehauke, thank you very much for being here i am going to save this as a pdf and then send it to you for you to have your e-notes you can just go through them and then we will keep now on building on this thing we used five pages uh, we will build on it it will come out as 12 pages but other pages will be empty so what we do is we will build on this day in and day out eventually you will get newton's laws a package of about 20 pages but that will be nicely designed because why explanation concept together made easy the work of two weeks we will complete in a week or two weeks or so with that being said thank you very much and have a lovely evening Thank you.